Clean, cold water, a critical asset essential to all life. Our water comes from the ocean, falling as rain and snow, mostly on forest lands. It then flows into streams and rivers and back to the ocean. Oregon's forests play a key role in the quality of our water. For 2.8 million people in Oregon, their drinking water comes from forested land. In the forest, both natural conditions and human activity can affect water quality. Once it leaves the forest, water faces many additional challenges, agricultural runoff, industrial and municipal discharges, and stormwater from suburbs and cities. We have high expectations of water quality from our forests. That's why in 1971, the Oregon legislature passed the first Forest Practices Act in the nation, regulating forestry and logging. Forest scientist Dr. George Ice knows how important water quality is to the public. The public won't allow us to continue to, to operate if we can't protect water and, and uh, aquatic habitat. And that's exactly what Oregon's Forest Practices Act intends to do. Forty years ago, those rules were minimal and very general. And this, these are sort of the original uh, rules, and, and it, you could put it in your pocket. Today, the rules are greatly expanded. Just looking at trying to understand the rules, there are hundreds of pages of, of uh, explanation of how, how you go about uh, doing a harvest. The rules are informed by decades of scientific studies, research, and field monitoring. But how well are they working? Fifty years ago, a study in the Alsea River Basin west of Corvallis measured water quality after harvest. It showed large increases in stream temperatures and erosion and decreases in dissolved oxygen, not good for fish. But today, using modern equipment, improved harvest practices, and advanced road building techniques, as well as leaving undisturbed forest buffers around streams, tests are showing minimal adverse water quality in the same watershed. Very small, if any, changes to temperature uh, very small, if any, changes in dissolved oxygen associated with our current practices. So it's really a way of, of validating the current forest practices and understanding are there any changes that we need to make? Uh, how, how are we to uh, best manage our, our riparian areas? Below the harvested area is a, a streamside buffer. There's a medium fish bearing stream at the bottom of this hillside and the stream itself is protected by a riparian buffer. Leaving wide buffers of undisturbed trees and soil on either side of a stream during and after harvest has proven very effective at protecting water quality. So buffers are, are left along streams in order to protect them. It's really keeping the, the disturbance away from the channel, which is very important because uh, if you disturb that channel, then you can have increased erosion. Minimizing soil disturbances along streams, and more generally during harvest operations, has proven key to the success of the new rules. So has changing the way that forest roads are constructed. This forest land has recently been harvested. Uh, it will be replanted uh, this, this coming winter in the next several months. And this road uh, shows an example of what post-logging or post-harvest maintenance should look like. Uh, the ditch has been reestablished. The rock on the road is clean. And we want to make sure that, that any water that's uh, on the surface of the road or in the ditch can be flowing away from streams uh, and have a place so that any sediment that's in the water can filter through the soil before it gets to a stream. Techniques such as water bars, like little speed bumps, can keep water from flowing down roads by diverting it off to appropriate locations. Also effective are larger and newer types of culverts under roadways and at stream crossings to protect small streams and restore fish habitat. Uh, historically, culverts that were undersized uh, would not be able to accommodate high flood flows and oftentimes the water would flow over the road and it's possible that the entire road could wash out. Newer oval-shaped culverts allow a stream to flow in a natural way under roadways and crossings. Logging techniques and equipment have changed greatly too. We're using standing skylines now where we're using carriages, 
that pull the logs directly off the ground and transport them to the landing compared to before when we used to just drag them directly to the landing across the soil. Forest thinning has also become much less invasive with the introduction of new lighter weight equipment. Over here we've harvested this stand uh, last Friday and as we moved up through the stand we put the limbs and the trees were harvested into the trail. Articulated vehicles allow a much lighter touch on the land and much greater work efficiency and safety. A cross cut to length processor reaches out, grabs a tree, and will cut it down, fall it, so it takes the place of a man with a chainsaw, and then it will limb the tree into whatever length you specify. Stream buffers, improved equipment, and new road building rules are only a few of the many measures that forest operators take to protect water. As the Oregon Forest Practices Act and its regulations continue to evolve, they are being embraced by a new generation of foresters and forest workers. They see themselves as stewards of the forest and the clean water they are capable of producing. We believe that we are good stewards to the land. We believe that we can be the best stewards to the land. Most of the woods workers who work in the woods also play in the woods. We hunt, we fish. This is our life. This is, this is a forest. We need to take care of this forest. These forest workers know that protecting and maintaining our working forests is in the best interest of landowners and all Oregonians. It is the best way to sustain forest jobs, supply wood products, provide quality fish and wildlife habitat, and protect clean water for current and future generations.